Hi everyone, this is Jay from the Data Science Jay YouTube channel and from Interview Query. And today I wanted to go over SQL data science interview questions. Why is SQL so important? In general, I would say that data science has kind of transitioned into two fields, as we know, and have talked about before, right? There is data science, the analytics side, and then data science, the machine learning side. I would say that within SQL, you need to know SQL to actually apply it to both machine learning and for analytics, right? SQL has been embedded in every single web app platform in the database of choice for about like 50 plus years. And even when people try to dethrone SQL with their like new kind of sexy Spark, Hadoop, NoSQL. I even read something about EdgeDB yesterday on Hacker News. It just doesn't work. And the reason for that is because knowing SQL, it has just the overall type case, overall fundamentals, uh, everything about it has been just fundamental and like the building part of data science. Basically, when you need to do analytics, you need to pull SQL queries to basically showcase and run your analytic jobs, ETLs, pull up metrics because all the information is stored in SQL. And then when you need to build machine learning models, you also need SQL to actually get all your data, right? the very beginning. So I guess in the concept of interviews, let's like wonder how often does SQL actually show up? Based on our analysis on interview query, we've seen that SQL is the most asked about and tested skill in any single kind of data science, data analytics, or even machine learning interview. The reason for that makes kind of a lot of sense because I talked to this data scientist the other day and he was a data science manager, he's a lead. He basically said that no matter what, the candidates that he is interviewing definitely needs to know SQL. And the reason why is because if you can't pull your own data, you can't work. You can't even just do any kind of work because no one is gonna pull your data for you as a data scientist or as a machine learning engineer. So in general, I think SQL is super prominent, super important. And some of the things that we've seen is that SQL has been tested about 90% of the time for Facebook's data science interviews based on historical data. It's tested about 75% of the time for Google's data science interviews and almost like 99% of the time, or probably 100% of the time for Amazon's business analyst, business intelligence, all these kind of data analyst roles as well. Basically, how do you actually get better at SQL and how do you pass the SQL interview? So almost every single time, the SQL interview is going to be essentially like whiteboarding. And what I mean by whiteboarding is that you will never be able to use a real live console while you're actually being tested on SQL. It's not like many like Python or algorithms types of interviews where you're using like an interface like CoderPad in which you can actually test your queries on a live environment, or sorry, not queries, but your code that you're running. And that's because code fundamentally, they wanna see that you can run test cases, right? That you actually know how to essentially program pretty quickly and iterate quickly. For SQL, there's not really test cases that you can actually run against SQL itself. Ultimately, what they wanna know is that, can you get the syntax right? Can you actually write correct SQL on like the first or second try? And can you make sure that it's correct? Because if you actually run like a wrong query and it actually does run, then potentially this is a query in a real like work environment that would run for like five, 10 minutes and then return like a wrong result, right? And so that's why uh, SQL interviews are almost never like done with like a live console database. And many times it's because it's emulating the fact that in a real job scenario, you have to be able to write SQL very effectively, very efficiently, and make sure that it's correct because of all these case scenarios in which how long database queries take to run and effectively how efficient you can be when you can write correct syntax on the first time. So that is kind of a downside, but I'd say on the upside, SQL is a pretty easy language to master and learn just with practice. I would say it's almost leak codable, in which leak code has kind of benefited from this term, which describes that the more that you actually practice and work on something, and basically kind of grind through it, then the better that you can actually get at it. And so SQL is also like that, in which if you do SQL in your day-to-day -day in terms of regular work, then you're probably gonna be prepared and ready to go for like the interview. If you do not, then you should probably practice a little bit more and it'll actually allow you to get better at SQL as well. Additionally, I think the benefit towards using a site like Interview Query to practice your SQL skills is the fact that if you don't tackle a specific type of SQL problem in 
your day to day, then we'll be able to showcase that kind of problem on interview query because of the fact that there are a wide range of just SQL concepts that you need to know, right? So if you are routinely doing like forecast work, right, in your data science job, right, then you're probably really good at computing moving averages on SQL or figuring out how to like do forecasts or time series on SQL. But maybe you're not that good at displaying potential analytics or being able to look at like A-B test variations between two groups in SQL. And so the goal is that you should really expand yourself and try a bunch of different kinds of SQL problems so that you get the breadth of any kind of SQL problem that someone might actually give you during an interview with a company. Lastly, here's like a couple of tips to get started. Whenever you're tackling a SQL problem, try practicing it without running any SQL code in the engine. That means giving yourself about 15 to 20 minutes just using like a code editor and practicing writing out the SQL query or the table schema that you see. After you finish that, work out all the bugs after you do try it in a real console and figure out where you actually got it wrong. If you have any syntax errors, remember to correct that because those are really, really kind of obvious red flags for interviewers and then remember to actually figure out to see if your query is correct or not once you actually uh, run it. If you do get stuck, try effectively working backwards. I find that whenever I think about what I actually want to produce, such as like a, an example output of the table, that usually helps me the best when I'm doing these uh, SQL problems uh, because then I can visualize and work backwards from that uh, example output to the very beginning. And then ultimately, if you are using interview query to help you out, check your solution against ours and then see if there's any optimizations you can make to make it more efficient. Generally, the more efficient that you make your query the first time, the better you'll do on an interview. Examples of efficiency here are not doing unnecessary joins, not doing like a where in statement, uh, with another subquery, not doing very like a ton of nested subqueries as well, uh, because those rack up the optimization time exponentially. And yeah, I would say that lastly, if you're trying to level yourself up on SQL problems, there's effectively what we've seen is like three different types of SQL levels, right? There's easy, medium, and hard. Easy problems involve doing just like standard count aggregations, you know, group buys, left joins, inner joins, and just understanding that fundamental. Medium level problems are more around getting specific metrics, I would say. And so how would you get like the daily, weekly, monthly active users, right, by different cities or by the platform? Or how would you calculate customer churn for different products? So these are kind of testing your advanced SQL concepts that are more around getting metrics, displaying dashboards, etc. Hard SQL problems are definitely the most ambiguous. Some of the times they're more about how you would construct a database and then ask you to write a query on that database. Other times it's about thinking about what kind of metrics you would need to pull. And so sometimes there's not actually a real right answer, right? So a interviewer might come to you and say, okay, let's say that we have this table and we need a query that will give us the best metric for us to understand if we need to change the product or not. So what metrics would that be? And so it's kind of like twofold, right? Because then you have to come up with a metric that would actually influence the product. And then you actually have to write a query to get that metric from the tables that you're given. And so many times those queries itself will be a medium to hard level kind of query in which you have to think about how to pull that metric from the table. And then additionally, you have to think about kind of the product metric part of is this metric actually helpful? And does it help us understand the problem better? And that's it. I would highly encourage everyone to check out interview query, check out a couple of our free solutions. You get three free practice problems when you start out as a user and upgrade if you're interested. That's it for me today. Please like and subscribe and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.